This is a Bill Quarter with one question for today's presentation. Do you know Tom Brady's favorite book? Tom Brady is, has been the quarterback for the New England Patriots. He's an individual who's been surrounded by a lot of different controversies. Uh, this presentation has nothing to do with innocence or guilt in any of those controversies, but it's a recommendation uh, to support the one book that he does read, and he reads it on an annual basis. And it's the book that he considers most important for his professional survival and personal survival. And he's not the only one um, who reads this book. In researching successful people and people who have made the most of their lives, it's striking how common this book has come up on their top 10 list. And the book is called The Four Agreements. And it's a short book only 120 some pages. You can read it in two hours in one afternoon. And its author is Don Miguel Ruiz. And it really is a presentation of old ancient wisdom. And it's from the Toltecs. This is a group of people from southern Mexico. And they developed their own philosophy and simplified it to four basic points. And for this presentation, as a way again to fight off the toxicity of the world and to fight off the chaos and the negativity of the world, I wanted to suggest possibly reading a second book, not just a Wayne Dyer book from the previous video, um, but also this book. And so I'd like to quickly go through the four points. They're simple, but I think they're very, very important. The first agreement is titled, Be Impeccable With Your Words. That agree, I mean, that title is a little bit esoteric. Um, you can simplify it to the following. Watch what you say. Watch your spoken words, because words are very powerful. And the recommendation from this first um, agreement is to not to blame yourself, not to judge yourself not to criticize yourself, to support yourself, to appreciate yourself, and to love yourself. The author felt the greatest sin and the greatest mistake you could make is self-rejection. Now that's not saying that you can go ahead and lie or cheat. That's not saying you can't be held accountable. But what it is saying is that you need to still believe in yourself and your ability to become a better person. And the same applies not just to you, but to others. So with your words, you need to try to be positive and supportive of yourself and others. And if you are, that will change the texture and the quality of your life. So that was agreement uh, number one. The second agreement, um, is don't take yourself personally. And for somebody in the public eye especially, but even for those who us who have normal regular jobs, it's important when you hear criticism. It's important when you hear negative remarks. It's important when you hear uh, bad performance comments that you don't take it personally. And if you can rise above the opinion of others, you really find a level of freedom that gives you a much better chance to be successful and a much better chance, I think, to find a level of happiness. And as two examples, and I'll refer back to Wayne Dyer, since my last presentation was on Wayne Dyer. When he was a young author, um, he would receive letters from the readers saying, oh, I loved your book. It totally changed my life. I'm a new person and now I have a so much better world around me. At the same time, he'd open the next letter and it would be a person saying, I want all my money back. That was absolutely the worst letter, I mean, worst book I've ever read in my life. And Wayne Dyer, when he was young, his standard response to those types of letters is he would write back, and it was a kind of format letter saying, I am currently reading your letter of criticism. I am sitting on the toilet, getting ready to go to the bathroom. Right now, 
Your piece of paper is in front of me, but in a minute it will be behind me. Thank you, Wayne Dyer. Now as he got older, he developed a different habit, showing that he had become in some ways a stronger person, even less uh, dependent on other people's opinions. He would take all the positive letters that came to him that loved his work and put it into one pile. And he would take all the letters that were criticizing uh, his work on another pile. And he would send those letters to each other. So if you wrote him a letter of appreciation, he'd send you back a letter from someone who hated him. And if you were a hater, he'd send you a letter back from someone who loved him. Demonstrating that the opinions out there don't matter. What matters is what's in here. So don't take things personally, rise above it and feel that freedom. The third agreement in this book is to don't make false assumptions. Too many of us make false assumptions in terms of a person's appearance, the color of their skin, their initial behaviors, their religion, their culture, etc. The book argues to not to make those assumptions. And the book argues that you have to appreciate other people's voice, points of view, even if they go against yours. Um, so you don't make assumptions about who they are. You don't make assumptions whether their opinions are right or wrong. You accept them and tolerate them. And if you do that, that too lifts you up. It's a little bit like um, the seven blind men being around an elephant and being asked to each touch a different part of the elephant. They all give you a different description of what the elephant it looks like. Um, and you have to appreciate that each person has their own perspective. Each person sees life through their own lens. And what you need to do is to accept that viewpoint, not necessarily agree with it, but accept it and just stick to your own viewpoint, your own faith in yourself, and your own faith in becoming a better person. The last point, number four, the fourth agreement, is to always do your best. And with this agreement, I have to be honest, uh, as someone who looks at the self-help literature, there are a ton of self-help experts who disagree with that completely. They will argue that each person has only so much energy and it's a waste to put all your energy and to always try to do your best on things that don't matter. And so many um, self-help experts will argue that you really should try your best only on those things that matter the most to you. You know, that's maximizing your efficiency. But the author of this book argues that when you always try your best, you are living life at its fullest. And so if you go through a whole week and maybe try your best only two, three hours on things that are the most important, and on the rest of the week you don't try your best, you're missing out on living life to the fullest. So I think there's some validity in all four of those points. And if you have any question mark, uh, because my recommendation as a habit is to try to develop all four of those points, to watch the power of your words, um, and to do all four of those components. Um, I think you'll find that your life will significantly change and your life will significantly improve. And one example, and I'll close with one example, Forrest Gump. Probably um, many of you have watched the movie Forrest Gump. If not, I strongly recommend it. But Forrest Gump was an individual who had his disabilities. Forrest Gump was an individual who never had any great um, original ideas. But Forrest Gump was a man who really was impeccable with his words. He said them in a positive light. He was a man who didn't take things personally. And there were tons of things that were said against him that could have been personal uh, and could have destroyed his spirit. He also didn't make false assumptions about people or about uh, his girlfriend in the movie. And in his activities, he always tried his best, whether it was playing football in college, whether it was going off to the war, whether it was playing ping pong after the war 
whether it was fishing for shrimp. Everything he did, he always tried his best. And in the end, his life was terrific. He led a wonderful life despite his disabilities. So I do think if you follow those four principles and read that book and incorporate that book, your life will get better and better and better. Thank you for listening. If you resonate with some of these topics, feel free to go to drbillcorder.com. Subscribe to drbillcorder.com. It's free. Uh, hopefully, together, we can make our lives better. Thank you.